Hi, I'm Steven. You can now watch UCF TV 24 hours a day on Bright House Digital Channel 1. Coming up next on UCF Sports Night, he's a voice all UCF fans know well. We'll introduce you to Eric Kohler. And the women's basketball team is marching towards conference play. We'll check in with Coach Joy Williams. All that and more right now on UCF Sports Night. UCF Sports Night is brought to you by UCF TV. Today's show is also presented in part by Budweiser, the perfect balance of flavor and refreshment. Open up a world of taste. By the energy-saving conservation programs of Tico People's Gas. And by Syntex Homes, proud to support UCF Athletics. Hello and welcome once again to UCF Sports Night. I'm Jeff Sharon. So glad you could join us. With final exams in the book, UCF's basketball teams got back to business, especially the women's basketball team getting back to action in the last full week before the holidays. They had four games in six days, and they kick things off with their sixth consecutive game away from home against a former conference rival. The women's team started the week in Jacksonville taking on the Dolphins. And a tough road test it was, but Chelsea Wiley came to the rescue as she dropped a three-pointer with 28 seconds left to lift the Knights over JU. UCF trailed by seven at the break, but rallied back thanks to 30 points from the bench and 14 of them from Wiley. The win put a nice cap on UCF's six-game road trip as they returned home to get ready for three huge games in three days. The Knights' first home game in almost a month saw them welcoming another in-state opponent in the Miami Hurricanes at UCF Arena. UCF got off to a good start against UM, taking a six-point lead at the break. Leading the Knights once again was Chelsea Wiley, who scored 20 points on 8 of 15 from the field. That would be her career high at the time. More on that later. UCF also got another massive game from Emma Cannon on the boards as she pulled down a dozen rebounds to go with nine points, and UCF was hanging tough against a very good Miami team in the second half. However, the Canes stormed back and eventually came out on top by a final score of 66 to 59. Marche White also chipped in with 11 points for UCF. Second game in as many days was game one of the UCF Holiday Classic as the Knights took on another ACC foe, Wake Forest, who had won all eight of their previous games by an average of almost 30 points a contest. But the Knights would have none of it. They stayed with the Demon Deacons all night long, led once again by Emma Cannon, who tallied 18 points and 16 rebounds, keeping UCF in striking distance until the final moments. Down three in the final seconds. Knights with a chance to tie. Angelica Mealing gets a look from deep and drills this three with just 17 seconds left and that would send it into overtime. Jelly with a career high 19 points, but in the end it would not be enough as the Deacons would stand the charge and escape with the victory, 82-75 in overtime. Aisha Kelly also chipped in with 10 for the Knights. She'd scored just six points for the entire season prior to Friday night. No rest for the weary, game number three in as many days pitted the Knights against the Rebels of Ole Miss. And wouldn't you know it, the Knights came out like gangbusters in the first half. The story here was Chelsea Wiley. She came out on fire, nailing five threes in the first half to help UCF to the lead at the break. The shooting streak would continue for Chelsea, who tied one school record by hitting eight of her nine attempts from downtown, and in the process set another school record for percentage. She shot 88% from beyond the arc for the game and finished with 31 points on the night, shattering the career high she had set earlier in the week. However, even that would not be enough to stem the tide of the Lady Rebels as they took the victory 85 to 67. Emma Cannon also had another 15 points once again for UCF as the team reflected on the finale of a tough week on the hardwood. That was, I don't know what that was, but I, I just felt like I was having a good night, so I just put the ball in the room and shot with confidence. So my teammates kept giving me the ball, so I just shot with confidence. <laughs> Meanwhile, the men's team was also in action, heading up to Jacksonville to take on the Florida Gators. First half, UCF and UF traded Haymakers. The three-point shooting 
was on point for the Knights thanks to Isaac Sosa. He hit a pair of threes on the night. He finished with six points. And also Chris Baez, who picked up a dozen points off the bench. A.J. Ramsa was also big in this game for the Knights. Three for three from downtown out of the game. He finished with 11 points and was also big on defense as he gets the steal here and looks ahead for Jermaine Taylor with the big flush on the break. UCF stayed with Florida for much of the first half. Later on, Kuba gets into the act. 7-4, Jacob Kuzmerich had six points on the night on two of four from the field. A good effort for him off the bench. However, the Knights went cold from the field after the half while the Gators stayed blazing hot and Florida would win in Jacksonville 89 to 61. The Knights shot 50% from three point range as a team, but it was all for naught against a very good Florida squad. We're still, you know, that little roller coaster going up and down. And uh, not only with our effort, but our execution, you know, and the combination of the two, the effort and the execution. You gotta come with some great effort. And for all the latest news and scores from all UCF sports, be sure to log on anytime to UCFathletics.com. Stick around. Coming up next here on UCF Sports Night, he's a familiar voice to all UCF fans and will introduce you to the man behind the mic when UCF Sports Night returns. Fans, give the gift of college hoops this holiday with the Outback Steakhouse 4-pack from UCF Men's Basketball. You can get tickets to four huge conference games against Memphis, SMU, Houston, and East Carolina, a Nightmare t-shirt, and an Outback gift card, all for just $50. To order, call 407-UCF-1000 or visit UCFAthletics.com. Welcome back to UCF Sports Night. If you've ever been to a UCF football, basketball, or baseball game, the voice over the public address system is a familiar one and has been for quite some time. Eric Kohler is the in-house voice of UCF Athletics, and who better to serve in that capacity than a guy who bleeds black and gold? We got a closer look at Eric in our Sports Night Spotlight. Uh, my name is Eric Kohler, and I'm a stadium announcer for UCF. I uh, moved from Sarasota, and I came up and uh, got admitted to UCF, finished my school straight, and got my business degree in 98. As a student, I was involved with WUCF, the FM station. I did play-by-play -play color and sideline reporting in the days of Dante Culpepper, so it was a lot of fun. Well, when I was at WUCF, uh, they start cutting our live feeds, so we lost a lot of our staffing. And uh, what happened was I saw an opportunity. I still had access to the equipment, and I had one of my buddies, Mike Wasserman, of all people, uh, we still covered games, I still showed up games, dressed the part and stuff like that. An administration had approached me that they needed a PA announcer for baseball, and that was the last year of Tinker Field in 99, and I didn't even know what a PA announcer was, but when opportunity came, I said yes, and uh, the rest kind of stuck. They started passing me other sports. I have to pay attention to every play of, of every game. With football, I memorized the whole numerical roster of football, believe it or not. I have it in little parts of my car and my house and so that way I can just focus on opposing teams. I think I get more feedback from football and basketball because basketball I'm on the court. Football is tougher because I'm in the stands but now since I had the first down call that's taken off, the third down call, it's nice to get that rush of interjecting energy into the stands and getting that feedback. But that'll move the chains, that's good enough for another UCF first down. I really enjoy when like Jermaine Taylor makes a dunk of just getting everybody off their feet and, and feeding that energy. That's I'd say football and basketball primarily because of an energy standpoint. I think that I can be a sixth man in terms of basketball or twelfth man with football. I'll give you one example. It was uh, Kevin Cobb's game, the Houston game. I don't know if you recall, it was in the Citrus Bowl. And they kept doing all these checks at the line on third down. So I got louder and louder on the third down enunciation. And what happened was they messed up the call, they botched the call. And they blew that it was on a fourth down conversion. And I and I feel like I was I was part of that to help the crowd, you know, force that turnover on downs where we ended up winning the game because that was the last drive of the game. 
I, I just hope I do a good job for my UCF family. I give everything I can, and, and what I bring to it is I bring professionalism, I bring my energy, my passion, and uh, you know, when you know I'm around, you know I'm always gonna get along with everybody and bring everybody together. All right, more to come here on UCF Sports Line. Coming up next, we'll check in with head women's basketball coach Joy Williams and ask her about the early part of the night season when UCF Sports Night returns. Fans, give the gift of college hoops this holiday with the Outback Steakhouse four pack from UCF Men's Basketball. You can get tickets to four huge conference games against Memphis, SMU, Houston, and East Carolina, a Nightmare t-shirt, and an Outback gift card all for just $50. To order, call 407-UCF-1000 or visit ucfathletics.com. Welcome back to UCF Sports Night. What a gauntlet the women's basketball team has gone through with their schedule. And now on the other end of that gauntlet, we're joined by head coach Joy Williams. How are you doing, coach? I'm doing good. Tell us about that schedule. You know, you guys played four games in six days against some really good competition. We did, Jeff. It was it was very, very tough. Um, you know, and like I said, beginning of the season, we knew our schedule was going to be very, very difficult. Um, and we did that with the hopes of it preparing us for a very successful uh, Conference USA season and, you know, faced four very good teams, got a win on the road and we were happy about that and then came back home and didn't fare so well. But I thought I thought we grew a lot within those three games that we just played and, and did a pretty good job. Let's go back to that very first game at the start of that whole stretch early in the week against Jacksonville. Big confidence booster for the team. It was. It was great to get on the road. You know, we had lost seven, eight straight and, and that's tough for a team. And, and the good thing about our team is that we never lost confidence. We never, morale never really got down. We knew the things that we needed to focus on and and we were able to do that against Jacksonville we got we played aggressive we had some people that really step up in the second half so I was very pleased tough game against Miami coming back home but then the next day you guys play Wake Forest another ACC team take them to overtime and play really well in the second half tell us about that effort how happy you were yeah very excited about the Wake Forest effort um, you know a very good team came in here undefeated um, so we had a great opportunity in front of us and I, I really think the kids were receptive to that they bought into that I thought our game plan was fantastic we had some kids really step up Chelsea Wiley played played great in that game Emma Cannon did a good job um, and we really fought Jelly you know having the frame uh, focus to take that shot and the confidence was great you know she does that in practice every day so it really wasn't a surprise but um, really an, an overall great effort I thought our overtime kind of the overtime kind of got us we missed some shots and had some good looks but but they didn't fall it, the game against Ole Miss was the third game in three days and you know we, it would be easy for us to understand you know, how tired the team was, but they didn't look tired in that game. Yeah, they, you know, our legs, of course, they were a little bit fatigued, but we certainly weren't going to use that as an excuse. I thought, uh, you know, our training staff did a good job of getting them stretched and good and ready. And they're 19. I tell them, you know, they can <laughs> they can run all day. So, um, you know, recovery-wise, I thought we recovered. I thought our, our breakdown in the Ole Miss game was really um, giving us some easy baskets in the second half, not blocking them off the boards. Um, I think that was only the third time we've been out rebounded all year. And, and rebounding is something that we really hang our hats on. So um, not a great effort on the boards, and that hurt us against a, a big physical team. You said something interesting about that game, I thought, that was, that was pretty telling. You said, you know, when we come back after the game, we don't have to say much to the, to the team. What do you mean by that? Well, you know, I think if you ask our kids, when, when I go in the locker room and I say what happened or <clears throat> tell me what you learned from this game, they all say the right things. I mean, they know what we didn't execute. They know exactly what we needed to do. Now the next step for them and their growth is to do it, is to really carry it out. You know, we work on those things and practice every day. And what they've got to do now is take that and, and transition it over to gameplay for 40 minutes. Who really stepped up this week for you? Well, I really felt good about Chelsea Wiley. I think there was a lot of growth with Chelsea. Um, we saw some flashes of uh, Aisha Kelly, I think, in the Wake Forest game. Did a good job for us. Um, 
uh, Amber Kirkpatrick is working her way back, um, so we're happy to have her. But I think overall, if I had to pick one player, uh, Chelsea is the player that probably played the most consistently um, over these three games. She set a new school record for uh, for three-point percentage in one game and tied another, making eight threes in that Ole Miss game. That was a heck of a performance. Now, tell me about what you have coming up now after the holidays. You guys have a little bit of a break now, so you get to uh, kind of relax with the family. But now, once you guys get back, what do you have on tap? We do. Um, our kids get a chance to relax a little bit. Uh, we'll come back for practice on December 27th um, to get ready for Florida State, another very good team from the ACC and an in-state rival, so in-state foe. So we'll um, be excited about, again, another great opportunity before we head into January 3rd that we've all uh, been looking very forward to is starting conference play and um, feeling good about the fact that we played a lot of different styles of teams, uh, teams that play different styles of basketball, and, and we're uh, really hopeful that that's going to help propel us to a, a good CUSA year. All right, Head Coach Troy Williams, happy holidays. We'll see you again in the new year. Thank you, Jeff. You too. All right, stick around. Coming up next here on UCF Sports Night, we've got our top three plays of the week from Hoops. We're back after this. Fans, give the gift of college hoops this holiday with the Outback Steakhouse 4-Pack from UCF Men's Basketball. You can get tickets to four huge conference games against Memphis, SMU, Houston, and East Carolina, a Nightmare t-shirt, and an Outback gift card, all for just $50. To order, call 407-UCF-1000 or visit ucfathletics.com. Welcome back to UCF Sports Night. Time now to check in with a little news and notes from the week in UCF Athletics. It's the month of December and that means postseason awards for football and Joe Burnett continues to fill up his trophy case. This week he was named first team All-America by both Sports Illustrated and ESPN.com as a kick returner. Burnett ranked in the top 20 in the nation in kickoff and punt returns, the only player in America to do that. He was also named Conference USA Special Teams Player of the Year last week. Burnett is UCF's first ever special teams honoree from SI and ESPN and was one of three UCF football players who received his degree last week. In cross country news, congratulations to senior and team captain Allison Palmer. She was named a Spirit of Service honoree by Conference USA for fall 2008. Palmer was recognized for her work with the Ronald McDonald House, Winter Park Day Nursery, and Baptist College Ministries, among numerous other organizations she's involved with. She was also named second team academic all-conference in cross country, along with teammate and sophomore Ocean Cohen. And in soccer news regarding the Knights Netminders, more hardware for freshman keeper Lenny Reyes of the women's team. She takes home second team honors on the Soccer America All-Freshman team. And also from men's soccer, Sean Johnson participated in the Team USA Under-20 camp held in Sunrise, Florida. He's being evaluated for a potential spot on the Under-20 U.S. World Cup team, which will compete next year in Egypt. Over to our Sports Night Plays of the Week, and we've got plenty of them from the week in hoops. Play number three, Emma Cannon was all over the place for UCF this week. Here against Miami, she gets the big block underneath in the final seconds of the first half, keeping the Hurricanes off the board. Watch again the huge stuff right back in the Hurricane player's face. Just one highlight from a week full of highlights for Emma Cannon. Play number two, men's basketball against Florida. And what's a UCF men's basketball game without a massive dunk by Jermaine Taylor? Here off the steal by A.J. Ramsa, Jermaine takes it himself and wows the Jacksonville crowd. Two of his 13 points on the night. Check it out again as this just never gets old. Excellent job by Jermaine and A.J. on that effort. But play number one has some drama with it. Women's hoops against Wake Forest at UCF Arena. Knights down three in the final seconds. They need a miracle and Jelly Mealing's prayer is answered as she knocks down this three with 17 seconds left in regulation to tie the game. Watch again as Jelly hits the clutch pressure shot. 
to send this thing to overtime, a dramatic moment in a huge week of basketball for both UCF squads. Now here's a look at some other great plays from the fall basket. are here and that means all of UCF's teams are off until the 29th of December. That's the first day of the UCF Holiday Classic at UCF Arena. On day one, Campbell takes on Chicago State at 4.30, followed by the Knights taking on Penn at 7. Then the next day, the losers of day one's games face off in the consolation game, followed by the winners in the championship. You can listen to UCF's games on AM740 WQTM or you can watch on UCFAthletics.com. Also, the women's basketball team has some time off, but they hit the court again on Wednesday, December 31st at 2 p.m. up in Tallahassee as they meet up with Florida State. You can listen to the game online on UCFAthletics.com. Fans, UCF Sports Night is on at a new time starting Tuesday, January 6th. The show will air on Sun Sports Tuesdays at 3.30 p.m., so make sure you set your DVRs. We will also still air on Bright House Sports Network at our regular times and on UCF TV throughout the week. Also starting Tuesday, January 6th, check out UCF Sports Today with Kirk Spiroff as Coach joins the voice of the Knights, Mark Daniels, to talk about the week in UCF basketball. Airing right after UCF Sports Night at 4 p.m. on Sun Sports, again starting Tuesday, January 6th. Don't forget, you can catch the Knights on the web anytime. Sign up for UCF All Access and you can watch live game broadcasts, features, and shows anytime from the comfort of your own home. All you have to do is visit UCFAthletics.com for more information. And for all the latest on all UCF sports, visit UCFAthletics.com, your home for UCF sports 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And as always, if you want to catch this episode one more time or you want to see any of our archived episodes of UCF Sports Night, you can anytime you want. All you have to do is log on to www.ucf.tv and click on UCF Sports Night. That is all for us for this week. For all of us here at UCF Athletics and UCF TV, I'm Jeff Sharon saying thank you so much for watching. Happy holidays and go Knights! Hey, this is LT from 101.1 WJRR. You're listening to the best sounds of area music. UCF Athletics, Access Magazine, and WJRR are proud to support local artists. You can find more great artists by going online at www.wjrr.com and also accessmag.com. And by listening to Native Noise each and every Sunday at 11 o'clock. UCF Sports Night has been brought to you by UCF TV. Today's show was also presented in part by... Bright House Networks. See how bright life can be. By Holler Classic, the official automotive group of the UCF Knights. And by Coca-Cola. Welcome to the Coke side of life.